Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. We're so glad you're joining us for this online service. I'm so excited we get to travel down to Costa Mesa and visit our daughter for her yes. birthday this week. And it's just going to be a wonderful time for our family as Lodi schools are on fall break. Woohoo! Which I have to say, the modified traditional schedule is really wonderful, mm -hmm. getting these two-week breaks in the fall and the spring. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fantastic. And personally... I could use a break right now. Yes, same. <laughs> I want to share a verse from Psalm chapter 18, verse 2. It says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. One, I love the Psalms, but I love how this starts off, that the Lord is my rock. And I hope that you find encouragement in this today, that Jesus can be your rock. He can be that firm foundation that you build your life upon. He can be your fortress. He can be your salvation. And so I hope that you put your faith and your trust in him. I love that. You know, when we were children's pastors, we used to sing a song that said, Jesus is my rock yes. and he rolls my blues away. Absolutely. And I love that about Jesus. He's our firm foundation and we can always trust in him. Yes. Let's take a moment and go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the rock on which we stand. God, you are solid, you are secure, and you are our firm foundation. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would continue to trust in your unfailing love and draw strength from you. Lord, I lift up our church family today, God. I pray, Father, that no matter what they're walking through, that they would recognize that you are walking right there with them, that they are not alone. Father, I pray that you would pour out your blessings on them and knit our hearts together in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's take a few minutes and worship together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every prayer
none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me we just received a message from Addie Mortensen, who was the worship leader for Fuse Student Ministries for a couple of years while she was in high school. And she's also led worship for our online service and some of our Sunday morning services right here on our campus in Lodi, California. And I have to say, it was great to hear from Addie. And I think you're gonna be excited about what she has to say. Yes, Addie's currently a student at Fordham University in New York City, and today we're going to see a little view from her window of downtown Manhattan. Hey everyone, it's Addie. I'm here at Fordham University in Manhattan. Here is my awesome view from my room. But yeah, so I just wanted to tell you about an experience I had today. So basically, I was in a classroom today. I was doing, um, I'm part of the radio station at my school now, so I'm a DJ. So I was doing my DJ set, and this woman comes in asking if the room is open to teach her student. Um, and then she says, Oh my gosh, are you from Lodi, California? And I was like, a little off guard. I was like, Uh, yeah, I'm from Lodi, California. He's like, Oh my gosh, Radiant Life Church, Pastor Robert's T. I was like, Yeah, that's my church back at home. Oh my gosh. And she was like, Oh my gosh, yeah, like I watch the online service every single week. Like I knew you were going to Fordham. You're Addie, you lead worship, right? I was like, oh my gosh, yes. And she was like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Like I watch the online service every single Sunday. I've done everything. Like I love the online services. I was like, dude, that is literally crazy. And so I was like, here, I'm literally in Manhattan. I'm literally at Fordham University in New York City. And this woman who watches the online service literally interacted with me today. And so I thought that was the coolest thing that happened. But yeah, I hope you guys have a good Sunday. Some things take on new meanings over time, and to the extent that we may have no clue what they originally meant. Take the phrase, the world is your oyster. I think it's pretty much universally accepted that this phrase means that there is a treasure waiting for each one of us to discover, or something like that, right? But the idiom actually comes from William Shakespeare's play called The Merry Wives of Windsor, which was first performed between 1597 and 1601. Published in 1602, a character named Pistol said, the world's mine oyster, which I with sword will open. It turns out that getting pearls out of oysters can take quite a bit of work because they have to be pried open with considerable force. According to pearlexpert.com, the chances of finding a natural pearl in an oyster is about one in 10,000. The odds of finding a natural pearl of gemstone quality is about one in a million. Various websites explain that pearls are formed when something that irritates the oyster gets trapped inside its shell. It's usually not a grain of sand as we may have believed, but more like a parasite or a tiny piece of the oyster shell that has been broken off by a predator. A pearl is slowly formed around the irritant over a period of two to four years. In 1893, Kokichi Mikimoto of Japan introduced irritants to oysters and successfully harvested the pearls they produced. Mikimoto is considered the father of modern pearl farming. Most of today's pearl jewelry contain these cultured pearls that result from human intervention. So next time you hear that the world is your oyster, you may want to consider that it takes the long-term presence of a well-handled irritant to form a single pearl. All of that takes place inwardly, while the value and beauty of a pearl requires reaching outward. As followers of Jesus, we cannot keep God's treasure to ourselves. We need to be committed to sharing the good news of Jesus by expanding the reach, extending the invitation, 
while expecting the victory. Let's crack open the Word of God and expose the pearls of truth in Isaiah 55, beginning at verse 3, where we read, Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you do not know, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Would you bow your head with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word that speaks into our lives today. We thank you for the fact that you have endowed us with splendor. And Father, we thank you that you have given us all that we need for life and godliness. So I pray that we would be committed to reaching outward and making the greatest impact possible through sharing the good news of Jesus May we shine the light of Jesus even more brightly in this generation. Yes, we pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. As followers of Jesus, reaching outward is a natural response to what the Lord has done in our lives. None of us deserves mercy, grace, and love that we have received from the Lord. God's love is much bigger than we deserve. God's love is much bigger than what we have done. God's love is much bigger than what anyone has ever deserved or done. As I've been reading through the Bible this year, I've been blown away by all the talk about wrath in the Old Testament. I don't like to talk about the wrath of God, but I know that it is real. What I have come to appreciate recently is that God doesn't seem to like to talk about wrath either. God's wrath is a necessary response to our sin. But when God talks about wrath, he does so as a warning. I don't believe for a second that God desires for anyone to experience his wrath. Instead, God wants to express mercy. All we must do is receive. Once we've received God's mercy and forgiveness for sin, we are part of expanding the reach of God's love by sharing the good news of Jesus. In Isaiah 55, 3, we read, Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. The Lord says, Listen that you may live. If you've ever wondered about God's will for your life, this is a good place to start. God wants you to live. God wants you to live in freedom from sin and shame. God wants you to live your life to the fullest through Jesus Christ. This is not only true for you and me, but it is true for every man, woman, and child alive today. We are committed to expanding the reach of the good news of Jesus because Jesus brings good news for everyone. Jesus doesn't divide us according to denomination, isolate us according to ideology, or exclude us because of ethnicity. Jesus unites us. Jesus gives life to all who turn to him in faith. Jesus adopts us into God's family through his blood that was shed on the cross to wash away our sin. So we're committed to reaching outward, sharing the good news of Jesus in this generation. In Romans 10, 12, and 13, we read, For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Calling on the name of the Lord is a choice that each person must make for ourselves. Calling on the name of the Lord brings salvation, freedom from sin and shame. Calling on the name of the Lord brings meaning and purpose to our lives. Calling on the name of the Lord brings peace regardless of our circumstances. Calling on the name of the Lord brings strength through the gifts of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. Calling on the name of the Lord 
brings hope for today, tomorrow, and eternity. As the Lord works in our lives, we find ourselves sharing the good news of Jesus with everyone we possibly can. Christianity is not an exclusive club. The church is not reserved for perfect people or people who meet certain criteria. The church is not perfect. Christians are not perfect. Jesus is perfect. The love of Jesus is perfect for everyone. The message of Jesus is perfect for everyone. The grace of Jesus is perfect for everyone. Jesus is perfect for everyone. What he's done for me, he can do for you. What he's done for you, he can do for everyone who calls on the name of Jesus. That's why we give our time, talent, and treasure toward extending the invitation to follow Jesus so everyone can receive Jesus and truly live. After all, everyone counts. In Isaiah 55, 4, we read, See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Witnesses tell people what they know, what they've seen, what they've heard, and what they've experienced. Witnesses don't change people's behavior. Witnesses don't change people's attitudes, and witnesses don't change people's minds. Each person who hears a witness testimony gets to decide what to do with it. Rulers and commanders actually do tell people what to do, but great rulers and commanders earn trust through genuine compassion and concern for the needs of others, extending the invitation to receive the blessings and benefits of following. So how far should we be extending the invitation to follow Jesus through our witness? The resurrected Jesus answered that question. In Mark 16, 15 and 16, we read, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Jesus tells us what to do, how to do it, and why we should do it. Following Jesus means going where Jesus leads us, and doing what Jesus tells us to do. We may not each be able to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, but we can work together to make a greater impact. We can invest the time, talent, and treasure that God has entrusted to each of us where it matters most. That's why we're reaching outward through two dozen ministries and missionaries here in Lodi, throughout California, across the U.S., and around the world through our prayer, financial support, and missions trips. Part of my responsibility as a pastor is to make sure we fulfill our commitments as a church. I'm not just concerned about being able to sustain ministry and mission support. I'm constantly praying and planning how we can amplify ministry and increase mission support. I'm convinced that Jesus is returning soon. How soon? The Bible tells us that no one knows the day nor the hour. But we know that we are already 2,000 years closer to his return than we were when Jesus gave his life on the cross as a ransom for our sin. We know that we are 2,000 years closer to his return than we were when Jesus conquered death by rising from the tomb. We know that we are 2,000 years closer to his return than we were when Jesus ascended into heaven and promised that he would return for us. We know that we are closer to the return of Jesus today than ever before. Jesus is trustworthy, and every promise he has made will be fulfilled. We're reaching outward by sharing the good news of Jesus because we're expecting the victory. In Isaiah 55, 5, we read, Surely you will summon the nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has endowed you with splendor. Did you catch that? The Lord your God has endowed you with splendor. An endowment is a natural capacity, power, or ability. Splendor is great brightness, brilliance, and magnificence. 
How can ordinary people summon the nations to come to the Lord? Because the Lord our God has given us his spirit and the Holy Spirit gets to do whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do because he's God and he can. The enemy constantly tells us that we shouldn't. The enemy constantly tells us that we can't. The enemy tries to get us into the trap of fearing failure and rejection. But the Holy Spirit has given us the capacity, power, and ability to reflect the brightness, brilliance, and magnificence of our Heavenly Father by reaching outward and sharing the good news of Jesus. We may face obstacles and challenges, but we should be expecting the victory that only Jesus can bring. In Romans 10, 14, and 15, we read, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Throughout the year, I receive confidential communications from missionary couples and families who are serving the Lord in sensitive regions of the world. Our brave brothers and sisters in Christ risk their lives every day because of their commitment to sharing the good news of Jesus. It's hard to imagine that they have no fear of arrest, torture, or possible execution. You won't find their names or faces on websites about missionaries and ministries that are reaching outward by sharing the good news of Jesus. And we don't publicize details about them because we want to help protect their identities and those they serve. But I can tell you that making it illegal to share the good news of Jesus has never stopped the spread of the gospel. Threats of prison, torture, and death have never stopped the Lord from transforming lives. The church is growing behind closed doors, in basements, on rooftops, in back rooms, and in the darkest places in this world. Why would anyone risk everything by sharing the good news of Jesus? Because they're called by God. Because they are seeing lives transformed by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Because miracles are taking place and the power of the Holy Spirit is at work. And because they are not willing to shrink in fear when eternity is at stake for men, women, and children living in need of the Savior. Those are also the reasons that we support ministries and missionaries serving in sensitive regions of the world. Not for glory, not for accolades, not for status, and not for personal gain or benefit. We do it for them. We do it for Jesus. Before the temple was constructed in Jerusalem, King David had the Ark of the Lord's Covenant brought to the holy city to establish a permanent place of worship. The ark had traveled through the wilderness with the people of God. The ark made its way into the promised land. The ark had been stolen and returned, only to be put in storage because of its great power and significance. Now the ark would be housed in a tent, also known as a tabernacle, until the temple would be built under the reign of King David's son, King Solomon. Instructing Asaph and those who would minister before the ark in Jerusalem, King David gave these instructions in 1 Chronicles 16, 23, and 24, where we read, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. While God has called some to carry the good news of Jesus to faraway places, Many of us are called to share the good news of Jesus right where we are, with friends, family, co-workers, neighbors, and those we encounter every day. As followers of Jesus, we should be reaching upward to the Lord for strength, provision, and direction. We should be intentional about the Word of God reaching inward to transform our hearts, minds, and spirits. We should be reaching downward to help lift those around us who are in need. And we should all be reaching outward with our time, talent, 
and treasure to declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. That's why we engage in ministry that reaches outside the walls of our church facilities, because our commitment to reaching outward, we provide groceries and prayer through the RLC food pantry, produce a weekly online service for people near and far, and equip kids in local schools to engage in acts of kindness through the ACT Project. Because of our commitment to reaching outward, we support ministries like the Salvation Army and Directions Medical Clinic right here in Lodi. Because of our commitment to reaching outward, we support Inspire Ministries in Stockton, Chi Alpha Campus Missionaries Mark and Natalie Afshar at UOP, Alex and Amanda Ramos at UC Santa Cruz, and the AGNCN One Fund. Because of our commitment to reaching outward, we support Wade and Susan Kogan in Alaska, National Chi Alpha Missionaries Paul and Jenny Austin, Shane and Marty Couch as missionaries to ministers, Augustine and Cindy Horquez, who are reaching Native Americans, and Wes and Judy Wick's intergenerational ministry called Young Enough to Serve. Because of our commitment to reaching outward, we support Todd and Amy Churchill of Africa's Hope, Eddie and Diana Echeverria in Argentina, Jordan and Vanessa Abina in France, Daniel and Kazune Matsunaga in Japan, Scott and Marissa Smith in Spain, Chanel and David Su in Taiwan, Derek and Shannon Smith with Worldwide Outreach, along with missionaries we cannot name in sensitive regions we won't mention publicly. Because of our commitment to reaching outward, we support and send teams to help build houses for families in need on the Baja Peninsula of Mexico with student reach missionaries Jeff and Tanya Duvall, David Eubank, and Edith Michael. And because of our commitment to reaching outward, we support those in our church family who take missions trips on their own, like Sophia Galindo, Ellie Mortensen, and Abigail and Zachary Schlipp. Near and far, we are reaching outward, sharing the good news of Jesus, expanding the reach, extending the invitation, and expecting the victory. If you have never made the decision to follow Jesus, then I pray that the love of God is reaching you today. I like to say that choosing to follow Jesus is as easy as ABC. The letter A stands for admit that you've sinned and ask God to forgive your sin. The letter B stands for believe that Jesus already paid the price for your sin when he died on the cross and that Jesus conquered death when he rose from the grave. And the letter C stands for choose and that's exactly what I wanna give you the opportunity to do right now, to choose for yourself to follow Jesus. If you're ready to make that choice and take that first step in the right direction, then please bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this simple prayer with me. You can make it your own if you mean it. Dear Jesus, I know that you are good, and I want you to be the Lord of my life. So I admit that I have sinned. And I ask you to forgive my sin because I believe that you paid the price for my sin when you died on the cross and you conquered death when you rose from the grave. And so I choose to follow you today and tomorrow and each day throughout my life's journey. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life, for taking away my sin, and for making me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed with me, please send an email to prayer at rlclodi.com. At Radiant Life Church, our mission is to share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's keep reaching outward and sharing the good news of Jesus because the best is yet to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. If you've been blessed by our online services and would like to support the ministries and missions efforts of Radiant Life Church, you can visit our website at radiantlifelodi.com and click the donate link at the top of the homepage. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord through your generosity. Oh.